welcome to this week's Sanity. Oh, well, last week. No, actually, last last week. Man, I'm really getting out of schedule with the probe lights. Yes, today we're going to be talking about probe lights. For those following my series, you may have already encountered these, but so far my explanation about them has been added and then baked. So today we are finally going to delve deeper into the mystic working of the probe light and how to properly use it in your maps. So what's a probe light? Well, once you get past the limited definition of add it and bake it, a probe light is an omnidirectional high definition image that gathers incandescent lightning information about a point in space, which is to say its, well, current location. And that's a pretty much the scientific meaning, and you can use that to impress your friends. What all that really means that is that the probe light entity just takes a 360 degree picture and then creates a cube map out of it, as you can see on the preview up here. Then blurs that and uses it to create lightning for a model, such as this preview sphere down here. And how that works is that it takes a it takes the normal of each of the model's polygons, and you can think of the normal as a perpendicular line from the surface of each polygon. So this sphere down here is a polygonal sphere, and you can see the lightning applied to it and how it works is. So it takes that normal and says, well, these polygons are looking at the top part of the cube map. So let's apply blue lightning to them. And these polygons down here are looking downwards, aka at the floor down here, which you can see on the cube map. And likewise, it applies reddish or yellowish in lightning to them. And this is a very good way to create, and this is actually the, how ambient lightning is made for, for dynamic models in Sears Engine 3. So to demonstrate this, let's add some models around here, for example a palm or something, plants, some, something that could obstruct the probe light and create a noticeable difference in the actual lightning. For example, we can place a lot of palms around here and place the probe light in the middle of all of them. So if I get back to the probe light now and bake it, you're going to see that the palms are going to show up on the preview cube map up here. So there they are. And this also applies for reflections. So any entity that has a reflection value higher than zero in its shader, such as weapons or enemies or any other shiny stuff, this, the reflection map of the probe light full range they are in, it, the, that the reflection map is going to apply to their own. So you can create a sort of sense, a sense of dynamic reflections, even though there is no real-time reflection in. Well, they are, but I'm, I'm going to get to those later. To demonstrate better, or to show you guys how to set probe lights in your own map, because so far you guys have been living on a single probe light, but most levels almost always benefit from having a very thorough coverage of probe lights. I've created the, this example map to show, to demonstrate how probe light ranges work and how to set up probe lights in your own map. So this map has no probe lights and has a pretty high contrast of environments. So you have these really bright rooftops, this dark interior in here. It gets darker, darker, and then in this room, you know, it's moderately bright, but still not as bright as the outside. So let's begin by adding a our first probe light. You can find it in entity list, you know, lights probe light, and then just drag and drop it, and go into editor, and go into room nine to render the edit mode, and you'll get this view. It's black and boring, so bake it. And this will serve as our, you can already see the omnidirectional part working. So this will work as our main world probe light to ensure that every piece of the world has, a, has at least some environmental lightning. So let's place this somewhere, you know, somewhere up here, where the general environment will be almost similar. So you'll have the blue background white floor. So let's place it up here. Oh wait, I don't have a probe light. Oh, let's delete that. 
never mind. So, take our pro light and let's bake it. And as you can see, the cube map is composed in most, almost entirely of the blue background and white sphere. And the angular the diameter of the buildings and other stuff is relevantly too small for 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 those objects to affect how lightning is generated. So if I am to expand the range of that, you're going to see how these that have no probe light are going to eventually get covered by it. Like so. And you can make the general probe light range as high as you want, although sometimes you might want to have more than one general probe lights. And by general I mean probe lights that have a, like, a really large range, so it is important that you make it really large, so that smaller local probe lights, like if I add one or in, in here, are going to easily override the general one. So let's add one in here. Place somewhere slightly above the ground, adjust its range so that it fits the interior and bake it again. And now when and now you can see that if I enter a playtest mode and go in third person view, I have some nice shading on my player model. Man, this is really lagging. But anyway, bear with me if I go inside. The shading and lightning is generally less intense. And I can actually create some really nice effects like this. So for example if I take this white, this yellow thing I've made here and place a pro place a pro light almost di directly adjacent to it. Or just the range and bake it. Now when I go with my well, now when I go there, you're going to see how I'm going to actually get l as if I'm lighted by the actual yellow blank thing. No, no, for some reason that's not very apparent. Let's copy paste a box here, a few of them. And face them at the yellow model here. You can see that there is some effect. You know, if I remove it and remake this, the yellowish tint on the side is gone. And if I re add it and bake my probe light again, I can see the yellow whoa, thing again. I can actually control the contrast that different parts of the cube map have an effect on. And I can do that by if I go through Entity and see probe light properties and expand probe lights, I have the ambient modulator and diffuse contrast. The ambient modulator simply controls how much ambient lightning the probe light applies to models. And you can see it on the preview on the actual probe lights view here. So let's say something like 0.7, and the contrast is the strength at which the varying colors affect the lightning. So if you play with these values, you can create some really nice effects. So right now I have a diffuse of 4 and the ambient modulator of 1. And now if I go inside, you can see that, I'm, that the, the charm set is actually becoming yellow as if it's lighted by light bouncing off of the yellow plane here. Alright, so let's tweak this a bit. I have added Sega Sun so that we can use him as a reference guide to see how the probe lights that we're going to add here and everywhere else are actually going to work. And I usually do this because it's more easier than entering playtest mode every time to see if our changes have worked. And this is just a simple model with the Sega Sun model loaded, and for auto start animation I've used either one to make him look more, well, realistic. Anyhow, let's get back to our probe light. As you can see, the closer I move this to the yellow plane, the more yellow, well, the more yellow light is going to apply to models facing it, 
because the angular diameter of the yellow plane is going to get almost 160. So if I move it closer, bake it, the yellow light gets stronger. If I move it closer and bake it again, even stronger. And if I place it almost entirely inside the model and bake it, wait, hold on. I got some clipping arrows, so don't place it too closely, but close enough. Now you can see that the, the yellow plane takes over almost a half of the sphere. And the yellow light it emits is fairly decent. Now keep in mind that this isn't 3D. If I place Sierra Summer on this side, you're going to see that the yellow light is f on the wrong, wrongly placed. That's because I'm using a single probe light and trying to compensate for both sides of this model. So if I want to fix that, I can place another one on this side. Like so and bake it. And now you can see that the light is properly emitted from the behind. So you can see this really yellow tint here. And this works even though the probe lights have essentially the same range because the actual algorithm takes the closest probe light instead of the probe light that the entity is actually in the range of. So even though this sound here is in the range of this probe light over here, the lightning applied to the model is still taken from this one because even though Sam is in the range of both, he is closest only through this one. And this, is how, and this, you should keep this in mind when setting up probe lights for your level, because because you can either get some artifacts, lightning artifacts, or you can get some really nice effects, such as the yellow plane emitting reflected light onto entities around it. Okay, so let's continue adding probe lights. We can just copy paste one of these, remove its rotation and place it in the center of the building block because even though I have a global light it's better to have a more denser coverage to get better blending between probe lights. So let's add one here. Make it. Add another one over here. And let's make sure that part of its range is not too deeply inside of the building but still enough for to have a sort of gradient transition between the outside one and the one I'm going to add inside. So make that one true. And let's copy paste one over here. Adjust its range again. And this time I'm giving gradient threshold over here for the dark corridor. And bake it again. And now if I take Sigur Sam and place him over here, you're going to notice that the lightning on his back, the one that's gradually controlled only by the probe lights, gets generally darker. So if I move him slightly, you can see how it gets darker when he gets closer to the other probe light and its own range. So we can continue doing that now. I had another one over here. Adjust the range. Bake it. And actually I might add another one, actually, because I'm going over about here. But usually this would be enough. But to demonstrate a better coverage of probe lights, let's add this one here. Where the corridor is extremely dark. And add another one over here where the lightning conditions get slightly higher. And then add another one in this corridor here. To control the transition between the dark corridor and the room one. And finally a main room probe light. Usually the center of the room will work best. And make it. And now I, you can see that when I move Sigasam around, 
the lightning on his model will change depending on the pool of light he's in. So if I move him inside the corridor, it gets darker because he's, he's entering the corridor probe light, but I can actually increase its range to control the blending time. As you see, gradually progressing inside the dark probe light. And if I now move towards the lighter one, get slightly higher in color, but not really. And you can see, actually see the probe light applying the reflection texture on Sam's glasses, which, which looks pretty cool. And if I move him towards the bright room, you know, gets gradually brighter and eventually really bright. And colored by the color of the walls. With the probe light's reflection texture, applying to the glass. Only the lightning changes gradually, the actual reflection map switches immediately. So I can't demonstrate this now, but keep in mind that the lightning is smoothly blends between probe lights, but the reflection texture actually doesn't, because it would have looked kind of weird. And well, this is it, this is pretty much all you need to know about setting up your own pro lights. We can play test this now in single in player mode. As you can see this is kind of annoying. A few other things I want to mention is that pro lights also have a render preview. And what this does is pretty much allows the probe light to remain even though editor models are disabled. So, if you want to make an example of a probe light and keep it in sync in playtesting mode, you know it will remain. Another thing is worth noticing, mentioning, is that you have a preview size. This is pretty much the size of the the editor mode over the probe light. So if you for some reason you want a larger probe light, for example to examine in better detail the the cube map, you can use that. And also you have the reflection texture size. And the reflection texture size pretty applies to the size of the captured environment map. So this thing here, the omnidirectional high definition image. By default I think it's pretty true, each size. Oh no, wait, I think it's 16 actually. Well, I'm not actually sure what the default size is. If you leave it at negative 1, you use the pre preset size, which I believe is 16. But you, we can increase that to 32. Or if we want a really high definition reflection texture. So, for example, if you have some environment that has you know, really high contrasts, like for example a chain link fence, which on one side is really dark, but on the other is bright, and you want that reflection texture and reflection to register on any objects that are, you know, inside the range of the probe light, you can use a really high value, such as 128, and then you can see that my probe, that making the probe light takes generally longer, sometimes really longer just, but the texture detail is extremely high so I can actually make up Sam now the create the buildings on the side but generally I would advise to keep this at you know only use larger probe light sizes only when really necessary because the higher the size the more calculations the lightning algorithm has to do. Another thing I want to mention, and I'm going to do so eventually. Hmm, interesting. Apparently changing back to negative one didn't reset the texture size. So yeah, okay, so I guess that if I set this to negative one, it still uses the default, the last use size, so 
if you change this to like 228 and bake it like I did, you're going to have to change it back to, neg to 16 if you want to get the default probe light size. Okay, so another thing I want to mention before I conclude this tutorial is that the ambient modulator and diffuse contrast, these things don't remain after you re it. So if I modify them to like two and like two again, or like so, I get this a nice contrast between the light side and the dark side. But if I bake this, you will notice that the values reset back to one and one. And I don't know if this is a bug or intentional. What I like to do is just have this a true, you know, if I have a settings. I then use the naming of the probe light and change it to probe lights. And then I write A1.5 and D2. And this actually reminds me that every time I rebake, I'm going to lose these values. So when I'm doing mass or bulk rebaking of probe lights, this is a reminder to, to what setting I used to have this on before the rebake happens. So keep in mind that if you change these, they're going to be reset back to one every time you rebake the pro lights. Export to GI. Well, I'm going to we're going to be discussing about this in later installments of the tutorial. This is mischievous and happy probe lighting.